Is Web 3.0 really the era of a new world? By Daniele Monteleone, Web3 Labs. Hello. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And thank you to the ABC staff to invite me here in Malta to meet these beautiful people here. So today we are going to talk about Web3, and I thank also for giving the opportunity to make this educational talk. How many of you heard about Web3? Somebody, yes. But how many of you know how it works? Uh, only one, two, okay. So in this session, we will understand how, what is Web3, how it works, and how it will impact on our lives and our work, business, almost at, as, as much as the Web2, the web of the social media, already did. I am Daniele Monteleone. And I am an early adopter on the Bitcoin and a tech entrepreneur and investor in Web3 projects and social impact projects. The Web Age. Like in the past age, like Iron Age, Stone Age, people, the society was shaped by that technology. And what is happening today is that our society is... Uh, impacted by the social media, social networks, and this profoundly changed in the last few years. And we could assist to this change. This is our present. I was devastated. These are the words of uh, Tim Manders Lee. He said in a recent interview that the web has failed to serve humanity. But how was Tim so concerned about the web? Let's say that with the web 2, that technology brings to a huge, a massive concentration of data in the hands of a few companies. As a result, this had negative consequences that we can see like data breach, for example, because we assisted almost every month to massive data breach. And it's not the point of the people's data exposed, because that's just the beginning. All these people become victims because they get uh, injected, they get scammed, they get fished, and cyber attacks. So, data breach are just the beginning. And uh, it's not only that, because like in the banks, you know, when you put the money in, in the bank, it's not the, your money anymore. And uh, the same is with your data. When, once you put your data in the social networks, it's not your data anymore, because they manage them, they profit from them, and they decide even you yourself can access to your own profile or you know, to your own data. So, in the end, we have a, you know, like in the social dilemma, we have a few companies that they decide what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. They are the legislator, they are the law enforcement, the prosecution, the defense, you know, the jury. Uh, they basically replace the entire legal system, you know, the justice system. So, in other words, they have established a kind of digital dictatorship. How can we move the web the way it was supposed to be? Here is the blockchain. 
So, like in the past, uh, I can mention Newton, that uh, he demonstrated the gravitational law, right? When, uh, in that, for that uh, achievement, he invented the integral math. And that tool was used afterwards by other mathematicians, physicians, to demonstrate other theories, to move forward in their field. So basically, one tool invented by the end zone was used to improve other fields of the science. At the same time, Satoshi Nakamoto, that we can consider the Newton of our age, he invented the Bitcoin. And to invent the Bitcoin, he solved an impossible problem, the decentralization of a ledger. What that is uh, the underneath technology, no? the blockchain technology. So what we have now is this technology that uh, we can use not only to decentralize a ledger, but we can use to decentralize any process. So basically, with thanks to the blockchain technology, we can decentralize the web. So, just to make an example, we had in the past Uber, uh, Uber where, for example, a user from Malta is asking to a company in San Francisco to look for a driver in Malta, okay? What will happen with the Web3 is that the user broadcasts his request in the local network and the drivers nearby apply for the service. Then the application of the user choose the best driver for rating, price, distance, etc. And then agree a smart contract with the driver where the phones are released once the destination is reached. So this is just one demonstration how it can work the decentralization of the web, but we can do thousands of examples like this. So what are we moving is uh, that the web in the past was just managing data, now is managing data, assets, money, and value, basically. The key factors of the Web3 are the semantic web that allows the pages to be readable, machine readable. The AI that can read, process, and enrich these contents. The blockchain that can decentralize all this process. And the IPv6 that allows to have so many IP address that today are almost finished, as many sand grains that are in, in, in the planet. So a massive amount of IP address, enough to address any device in the present and in the future. So we will move the web tree will be not only for the humans, but will be also for the human and the machine together, bringing the user base from, mil from billion to trillion. What are the Web3 benefits? The first is the permissionless technology. Uh, we have an example, like uh, it happens, you know the CryptoKitties, I think many of you know that. Yeah, um, in the, there is another team uh, that developed the Crypto Dragons. And to feed the Crypto Dragons, you had to feed them with the Crypto Kitties. Okay, so and they, they didn't have to ask the permission to the Crypto Kitties team to make this game. Because the, the, the nice part of the permissionless technology is that every, everybody can improve. So there is no limit without needing to ask somebody else to stop you. You can just improve whatever you want. Data ownership. You own your data. Your data, your data are encrypted with, a, you, with your private key. 
and you are in charge to, to disclose whatever you want with whoever you want. Transparency, all the processes are in smart contracts, so there is no closed source apps that brings your information somewhere else or cookies that steal your uh, sensitive data and selling to kind of, you know, uh, advertisement companies. All the processes are transparent and clear for everyone. Interoperability, like the protocol is open. Everybody can bring different technology combined. So we will have a cross technologies, cross platform technologies that can interact together. And without reinventing the wheel, you just can focus in improving and innovation. Privacy, last point, is uh, very important because finally we, we can choose, we are in charge, we can decide which data we want to disclose and which data we want to keep uh, reservated you know, to uh, some of our audience. So I will be short with these uh, features because any of them require a lot to talk. I just can mention the universal decentralized login. We don't need to register, verify, verification in any form with the, you know, different service providers. We just need a way to authenticate ourselves without putting, you know, because in the past we had the username and password, no? We had a table in a database that collected the user names and the password of everyone. Now, with a um, asymmetric encryption, we can just co connect our username to our public key and uh, authenticate with a si digital signature with our private key and demonstrate that, that we are ourselves without storing passwords anywhere. The centralizing system. Now the DNS are centralized and uh, managed like, uh, you know, a pyramid uh, organization. But uh, with the DNS, with the blockchain, we can manage just in the blockchain all the name system and the resolution of that without keeping even registration authority uh, no, on managing that. Then we have support for the centralized website, a multi-currency wallet that can be integrated with the browsing. Because when you will browse, we will manage, as I, say, as I said, data and uh, assets with the same technology. Web dApps, so there will be address that will provide the centralized web applications. And then, very important also to keep the retro compatibility with, with the web too, because we will have a lot of service already there, even if we will move to the web three. And then the decentralized identity, I can mention, uh, because you know how boring it is to compile the forms with your data and then uh, eventually verification with your document, etc. We can put all this information in a non-fungible token and then send it with a signature to demonstrate that we are that. And, and that's it. We don't need other, you know, boring procedures anymore. So this is an example of uh, how it works. I will describe better when uh, in other session. And this is the growth. We are very used to this kind of graphics because it's exponential. And like uh, many other technologies of the last decade, networking technologies of the last decades. So I thank you very much, everyone. Uh, feel free to stop me everywhere you meet me and ask more details about the Web3 and this amazing e progress that we are attending uh, here. Thank you very much.